Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my festive tech calendar talk. I'm Derek Campbell, I'm a Senior Solutions Architect in the community team at Octopus Deploy. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about my personal journey with imposter syndrome. Okay, so let's uh, jump in. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a little bit about what is imposter syndrome? Uh, who does it affect? Uh, how I suffer from it, uh, and tips on how I deal with it. So, the term imposter syndrome uh, is an internal experience. Uh, and what that basically is, is it makes you feel that you're not as competent as others perceive you to be, that you're not good enough, um, that really that you're there somewhere, uh, you know, you may be a successful person. Um a mildly successful person, and what it is is you feel that, that you're there because of work. Um, it was first identified back in 1978. Uh, it was by psychologists Pauline Rose Clance and Suzanne Eames, uh, and it was there uh, where they just started to discover that there was links to things like perfectionism. Uh, I know that I uh, struggle a little bit with that. You feel like a phony and you're about to be found out. And yeah, like I was saying, obviously, it's about luck, uh, you know, and I, I do suffer from it. Um, it was initially linked to, uh, or at least thought that it was, uh, it was just high achieving uh, females. What it was, though, is it actually affects many, many different uh, people. Uh, it affects people with different backgrounds, different social statuses, expertise, classes, and different, many, many different professions. I, I work in technology. I'm pretty sure that you work in technology as well. Um, but what it also leads to is where you sabotage your own success. Uh, so where you basically, if, you know, you may not go for a promotion that you, you know, have a good chance of getting, or you don't really put yourself forward. Like one of the things I like to do is do talks. This is why I'm here. Uh, you know, people, for instance, often, uh, you know, choose not to participate uh, because they think that they don't have anything to add. But in actual fact, your story has so much to add. Uh, so definitely uh, have a little bit of think about that. So how it uh, affects me. Uh, so my journey with imposter syndrome started roughly about three years ago, pretty much about the day after I started uh, Octopus Deploy. Uh, so Octopus Deploy is a deployment automation tool. Uh, it's a unified DevOps tool that does things like uh, run books and uh, provisioning and all sorts of different things. You know, by all means, check it out. I had been a long time user and I was a bit of a super fan, if I'm being honest. Um, you know, obviously really happy. I'd, I've landed my dream job at my dream company. I'm really, really happy. But with that, I found that there was definitely um, some problems. Uh, it's definitely something I've had for a long time. Um, but what I found was it definitely accelerated. I think it's because, obviously, the, the nature of what I do, I'm quite public-facing, I'm quite out there. Um, you know, I'd consider myself to be a really good techie. Uh, so, obviously, you know, I've been doing it for the best part of 20 years now. Uh, I know what I'm talking about, or, or do I? Um, but what it is, is I definitely found, and, and it, what it was, is it was, I found that I made a step up uh, to obviously, you know, I'd been working uh, where I'd been working and that was all great. I found that um, it really kicked in uh, when I actually started working with Paul Stovo and all the team uh, at Octopus. The main reason is they're all super proficient, really great technical people. And I said, like, oh no, that, you know, I'm not that person. Through time, you know, I've done really well at Octopus. I love, still love the product, um, but I've done really, really well. Um, or at least I think to, uh, at least I like to think I have. Um, and really, what that what's happened is over the last three years, I've done some really cool stuff. You know, I've been doing a lot of public speaking. I've done, you know, something like 40, 50 webinars. Um, you know, I've been taught. I've spoken, spoken in Brisbane, Australia. I'm talking in Toronto next month, um, and Copenhagen, Stockholm, etc. And the feedback's always been good, so I must know what I'm talking about, right? But definitely, um, that has it has definitely affected me over the last few years. It was something that affected me as well. Uh, or, you know, there was times in the past where I, I was put in really uncomfortable situations, and, and in actual fact, I didn't drown. Um, I actually managed to swim, 
and 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 I actually managed to do really well. Um, every time I've actually I'm generally putting uh, a situation I'm uncomfortable, it's, it's, I've actually got a track record of being really good and turning things around and, and, and doing something really cool. So, but that doesn't that doesn't mean I don't suffer from it. Um, there's a lot of internal doubt. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things there, and over time. Um, I've definitely learned to deal with it, and and you know, and that's it. I'm trying to avoid my own uh, sabotaging my own success. So, how do I deal with imposter syndrome? So, what I do is I talk about it. Uh, here I am, you know, um, I'm out here. I'm I'm talking about something that's probably pretty personal. Um, but one of the big things that I've done is I've done a lot of talks and I've been adding this little bit. It's a much smaller version of it um, at the end of each of my talks. It's just the idea is, is to encourage people. But one of the things that I do is I talk about it with colleagues and friends. Uh, I talk about it to strangers on the internet. Um, hopefully I can help you. But one of the things that really helped me was my wife. Uh, she's awesome. Uh, and she does really cool things and, and she kind of manages to remove it from me pretty quickly she you know she reinforces how, how great I am I should probably Nicola if you do watch this um I'll probably need to slip you that 50 later on but honestly that really helps me um having someone that really believes in me um who who does help remove some of my self-doubt um but as well as that you know obviously I talk with it colleagues uh and friends as well you know obviously maybe going for a beer obviously with COVID that you may not be able to do that um, but you know you can have a beer over a Zoom but definitely talking about it leads to my next point um, actually talking about it with friends actually mentally reinforces yourself because um, what happens is you know your friend or your wife will probably say something you'll be like you know you're right I am really good at what I do or at least I'm you know uh, I'm doing well enough um, and what I find I do as well is I beat myself up a little bit about you know maybe not knowing something um, you know, because everybody knows everything, and or they do in my head uh, sometimes. But it's okay not to know something, and I think that's one of the things that that I think technology now is. It's it's a you know I love it. Obviously, I wouldn't do what I do with uh, without that love. But actually, it's okay not to know something, and you can be open about it. If you can't be open about it, um, I consider your working environment. Um, you know, that may be somewhere that. It may not be the best place for you. Uh, if you can't be open in who you are and be who you are, um, that would be one of the things that I would definitely be looking at. Uh, but one of the things is, is there is so many resources. You know, I, I started out as a sysadmin about 20 years ago. And and things, information back then wasn't as freely available. So it's almost okay. It's almost expected not to know something. And that's fine. Uh, you know, obviously you can catch up and read the documents. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of T-shaped learning. Um, what that basically is, if you think about a big T and, and you think you're the, the the width and breadth of your knowledge, you want to know a little about a lot of things and then you want to know a lot about a particular item, you know, specialities. I, I'm a bit like that. Uh, Mine is uh, certain bits. Obviously, I come from a Windows background. Uh, it's obviously, you know, done some Linux, etc. But one of the things is 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 find your niche, uh, find where, where you're good. It, you may find that you know you may have a it might be more of a a different uh, type of learning for you. But you know what I would say there is just be you know try to find it's okay not to know something. Uh, and if something is broken, uh, if they tell you it's not DNS, it's probably still DNS. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it's okay with that. But I, another one as well is don't obsess about perfection. You know, like for instance, I'm a big fan of the 80-20 uh, rule. You know, obviously you can know 80% or something with, you know, 20% of the effort. Uh, and then obviously that last bit there. But big thing here is don't obsess about it. Not if No one's perfect. Um, fake it, you know, in some cases, fake it until you make it. Um, so I was, um, I remember about, about 10 years ago, uh, I was... Um, I was involved uh, for a really large UK organisation um, and they were going to be doing a cycle rebuild and with that there was lots of sequel work and they were going to be hosting things by themselves and so I was requested as the um, as the senior system architect back then to go along and have a chat. Turned out every single one of the database administrators were Oracle database uh, administrators and I'm not saying Oracle is terrible but it's definitely a different uh, beast than SQL. So one of the things that... Um, I done is I actually was going along that morning and fortunately 
the project manager um, wasn't able to, 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 to make it. The technical lead um, actually had something really urgent. So I was sent along to an uh, unnamed uh, large organization that happened to be in Houston. Went along and all I had was my iPad. Um, and I walked into a room, it was 15 Oracle database administrators. I was terrified. And the thing is, is I didn't, I thought I was going to be found out that I didn't know that much about SQL. And uh, in the end, I actually found out that I knew way more than I expected. Um, I sat down and, you know, there's lots of chats about collation, backups, maintenance plans, all that. And I managed to answer all the questions. And in actual fact, what happened there was it led to about a seven year relationship uh, where we, I was a technical lead uh, for that organization uh, in that capacity. Uh, and I actually moved to Australia and they still requested my call. So I must have done something, right? Which is good. Uh, but honestly, see, when I felt, um, I felt, um, when I walked out of that room, I felt like a million dollars. Um, and also one of the things is, is with speaking, I remember I, I've done, you know, I've done some public speaking. I've done it uh, back at high school, then at university and stuff. And then I, I haven't done it for a long time. And when I joined Octopus, I was asked to do some talks and I was terrified as well. Um, it was at SQL in the City um, back in um, October 2018. It was my first technology talk. I was told to, to get along and do a talk. Absolutely terrified. I can't, I was saying that, there seems to be a recurring theme there with DBAs but uh, and myself. But, you know, I went along, I'd done my talk, and then I had my, my second talk the next month in London again uh, at WinOps. Uh, shout out to WinOps, great event if you're in the UK, definitely check it out. I went along to WinOps and it was like, again, doing a talk. Um, there was another, uh, there was about 50 people in the room. It wasn't a massive amount. I was so nervous. Um, and I absolutely knocked out the park. Again, round of applause. Everybody was really happy with it. And what that made, that made me feel fantastic. After that, it gave me a bit of a bug, to be honest. You know, here I am. I've, you know, I've done 50 webinars or thereabouts now, uh, if not more. Um, you know, a video. I'm doing talks, uh, you know, I've been around um, a lot of different countries where I've spoke in person and remotely uh, as well. Uh, but, you know, by, by all means, speaking has really helped me. Um, one of the things that, has, you know, getting up and talking about your experiences has really helped reaffirm um, how I feel about myself. And what it's meant is, hey, I do know what I'm talking about most of the time. Um, and then... Um, but what I would say is, well, if speaking's not for you, that's fine. You know, you may be a blogger or, or a writer. That also works. That's also a great way to, to, to get over that as well. If you know someone who is who wants to do a, a talk and they're a little, not, a little nervous, give them a bit of encouragement. Um, I would definitely recommend just giving them a little bit of encouragement and a little kind of help along the way. Maybe spend your, your lunchtime uh, looking at their talk or get them to run through it. Build their confidence up. Uh, but where possible, and, you know, if you don't suffer from this, that's fine. Uh, that's great too. But also just make sure, you know, make, ensure that you realise others do. Uh, and certainly what another thing that I often do as well is um, mentor people as well. So if you if you are also keen on uh, me mentoring you, please do reach out to me on Twitter at DevOps Derek. Uh, I'm definitely keen uh, to help people out there. And one of the big things that I like to do um I think I found this inspirational quote off the internet somewhere. Um, and what it is, is it's it's comparing yourself to your yesterday, not someone else's today. If you're into the, your career a few years and you're comparing yourself to Scott Hanselman, give yourself a break. Uh, you're not Scott Hanselman. Like, you, know, you're, you know, you may be someone else and that's cool. But always try and keep learning. That's the biggest thing I can do. If compare yourself, say, for instance, to six months ago, you know, what have you learned, uh, you know, what have you not learned as well? That's also something to consider. But make sure that you're comparing yourself to you and not someone else, because you're not someone else. I, you know, for instance, I'm never going to be anyone but Derek Brian, uh, Derek Campbell. Uh, I shouldn't probably tell you my full name. Um, so yeah, um, so that's just one I'd say is definitely compare yourself. You know, we're not all Scott Hanselman or Troy Hunt or Bill Gates. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, consider that one. Okay, so thank you. I hope you've enjoyed my talk. I hope I've encouraged you um, and I hope that you've learned something. Uh, if you'd ever want to find out um, more, uh, please reach out to me on DevOps Derek on Twitter. 
Uh, but thank you. I hope you enjoy um, the, the rest of the festive tech calendar. And I'll see you next year.